What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders uh, like the founders of RX Bars, which ended up selling to Kellogg for $600 million. I had no idea how big they were when I talked to them. Uh, P90X founder Tony Horton, he talked about how he made money as a street mime, um, and that's how he made food and rent money before he built up to sell hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, talked about when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. Um, And so check out the interviews on Inspired Insider. There's some very interesting conversations. And today's interview is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, Our mission is really to connect you with your best referral partners and customers and we do that through a couple done-for-you services, um, which is a done-for-you event for organizations and software companies, a done-for-you podcast service, which I believe is the number one thing I do for my business and my life, meet my best friends, business partners, and many more, and a done-for-you lead generation. It is not paid. Um, it is actually one-on-one cold outreach using different social media and email. Um, We do have a greater purpose behind what we do. So if you are interested and you know a veteran entrepreneurs, we have a veteran entrepreneur scholarship. So each of the events we do, we will um, do a scholarship and you can go to rise25.com slash mission and apply. If you are a veteran entrepreneur, if you know a veteran entrepreneur, send them to that link rise25.com slash mission. We did one at Traffic Conversion which I know you guys were at, uh, Stefan, and uh, we had a veteran entrepreneur. We paid for his flight, hotel, food, uh, ticket to our VIP event, and then a ticket to the conference. So it was a pretty cool deal, and so we like to do that at the different events we do. I won't go into the reason why you can read on the page, but um, it's because of our myself and John's grandfathers were big uh, inspirations to us. So uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce um, the guest today. Um, and so I was thinking about how to introduce Stefan. Like I, he's a really a brilliant marketer, and I know him uh, as a friend. We've even gone to a Cubs game together. Um, but so this is what I think of when I, I think of how does meeting a mysterious woman at a late night poker game lead to a new career as a copywriter to selling over $530 million worth of product and an agency that helps other companies pour rocket fuel onto their business that go on to sell hundreds of millions of dollars within several years. Um, Stephen Georgie regularly charges fifty to $100,000 for a single sales letter. He's a sought after copywriter. He runs a group of some of the who's who of direct response companies that include people from Agora, Natural Health Sherpa, and some other nine-figure health companies. Um, You can learn more, go to redoxconsulting.com, or if you're at seven figures or beyond and you wanna scale your direct response company, go there. If you wanna go to copyandfunnelaccelerator.com slash outline, you get Stefan's exact copywriting process, which we'll dig into a little bit today, and they have an amazing group, which we'll talk about uh, as well and some of the learnings from it. Um, or you could hear his business lessons and musings, which I always love to hear, uh, stephanpaulgeorgie.com slash blog, and we'll link that up. Stefan, thanks for joining me. Hey, Jeremy. Thank you. It's really great to be here. And I always ask, since this is Inspired Insider, um, what's been the lowest point and on one side and what's been a proud moment um, on the other side? And... Um, I'll have you talk to the low point about the business, but I do want to bring one thing up because when I did my research of, on you, you know, I heard the poker story over and over and I, and I obviously hung out with you and Laura and, and everything. Um, but what I didn't realize is the reason you went back home is because you're dad. Yeah. And absolutely. I wanted to have you speak to what are some of the lessons you learned from your dad? 
Absolutely. So yeah, and, and for the context for that, basically in 2011, I was in Texas at an outdoor school teaching children in the wilderness about survival and water quality and following the Texas state curriculum. And I found out my dad had a stage four liver cancer. Terrible. And it was very sudden, very unexpected. I had not planned on moving back home. But when I found that out, once the semester at the, that outdoor school ended, I, I went back home to help uh, take care of my dad and be with him and spend time with him. And then he passed away mm. in October yeah. of that same year. So yeah. pretty quickly. So sorry. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. I mean, you know, it is, it's part of life. And, and the, I mean, the lessons to answer that one, uh, Probably the people always said my dad was very, um, very ethical. That he had a lot of integrity, and I think that's something I try to to bring into my life as well. My dealings with people, both in business and in personal life. So I really think I got my sense of, of ethics and integrity mm. from him. You know, just a what funny example. Do? Well, he uh, he was he worked for a, a loudspeaker company called Coke mm. Audio. So he was one of their early employees mm. with that. Uh, that's how we originally. They, they were based in Baltimore, Maryland, and then they opened a manufacturing plant in Mexico and a warehouse on the other side of the border in San Diego. So when I was nine, my family moved to San Diego, hmm. and my dad kind of helped to run the warehouse and the manufacturing uh, facility for them. Hmm. And yeah, and he's he, you know, he, he has a great cool story too, which I always think about because he uh, grew up and he was born in Indiana, moved around a little bit. As well, he was a very good swimmer, uh, almost kind of made it to the Olympics as a swimmer. Wow. And then he became like a hippie. He went to John Hopkins you know, back in the day, got kicked out of John Hopkins for being a wild party animal, uh, was an alcoholic who prior to me being born, they basically told him because his liver was already messed up at that point that he'd like die in like a year. Wow. He stopped drinking and you know made it to over past 60, uh, which is inspirational. But, you know, ultimately kind of got his stuff together. And he really didn't get his life together until probably the age of 30, which is kind of funny because then I remember him talking to me maybe a month before he passed away. And he told me that he was like, you're kind of like an unguided missile right now, which was a fair anal kind of analysis because at that point in my life, I had sort of bounced around from a lot of things and didn't really know who I was. And, and part of it, I think, was ADD. Part of it was not embracing that entrepreneurialism that I had inside of me. Mm, yeah. Uh, but I also thought it was funny because I was like, man, I'm like 20, whatever it was at the time, like 24, like you were the same way. Um, right. But but I think one of the best lessons going back to that was with the company, because I get these jobs with companies and I'm not one of the entrepreneurs who always got fired. I would always be in line for promotions very quickly, hmm. like way faster than they normally did. And people would think I was like, you know, brilliant and all this great stuff. And I would quit anyway. I'd be like, no, nah, I can't do it. Um, but I remember talking to him when I was in one of these companies and it was like, man, I just... It's so hard for me to know that it's going to be like a year before I can get my first promotion and it will be like years until I get to like higher up. And he kind of said, you know, in my experience, the cream always rises to the top, which I think is actually very, I still think that's a very valuable lesson. It wasn't right in the context of me staying in that company, I don't think, because my, my path, I'm very happy with the path I've taken. But I think about it even as far as like with copywriting goes and if I'm talking to young copywriters and they start worrying about making more money getting more clients and all those sorts of things. And, and the truth of the matter is if you just focus on being the absolute best you can be at perfecting your craft, at being really good at a couple of things, at just being committed to excellence, if you do all those things and you just focus on that and what you can control, generally you're going to get to that place where everything else follows, where from a copy perspective you can get paid more money from clients, that you're not having to chase clients, that you have financial stability in your life, all those sorts of things. So the way I've interpreted that lesson is that really – Focus on being the cream, right? Instead of worrying about what's up at the top, just focus on being becoming the cream. Uh, so that's probably that's a lesson he he t kind of taught me that has really stuck with me. What perspective does that did that give you, like going back and, and seeing your dad? Because um, that must have been obviously really difficult. I mean, I I find it difficult. It wasn't my dad, you know. Right. Uh, so what perspective does that give you now? I mean, you're a father now. Yeah, it builds, well, I think for one thing, it does build a very strong internal sense of strength going through it because the easier thing to do would have been to not go back or visit once a week or not be there. And, I, you know, I moved back home, lived in like the guest room, was there all the time, saw, you know, kind of terrible, disturbing stuff like with like, you know, as his body broke down, like his body broke down. And so yeah. just seeing these things like coming in the morning, you know, on like a medical cot in my parents' bedroom and see my dad and he's dead and I'm just sitting there looking at my dead father. It's terrible. Right? It's terrible and it's crazy 
and it like uh, it, it changes you. And I think for some people, but I think there's also the lesson of like, you still get to choose how you respond, right? Like Stephen Covey talks about responsibility, which is your ability to respond. Mm. And I think it's the same thing for me. So while I, I mourned my father, and of course it was a difficult time, uh, and, and it kind of goes back to your question about like a low point and a high point in a way. I mean, it was a low point in seeing my father pass away, but it did imbue upon me and inside of me this incredible internal kind of almost confidence and sense of strength of knowing that this was such a difficult thing that I have just gone through. And yet, you know, I got through it. I'm proud of the man I was. I'm proud of how I acted. You know, maybe a few days before my dad had died, we had a conversation where I basically was like, and I was crying. I broke down crying during the conversation, but it was like, you know, hey, man, like I, I, I'm so thankful for everything you've done for me. I love you so much. Like, you know, you've been such a great part of my life. And I was able to, all, all those things that people sometimes wish they didn't get to say, right. like I got to say, and I was very conscious of it. And I remember my dad being like, this is a really weird conversation to be having, uh, you know, but I appreciate it and I love you too. And the fact that we were able to have that conversation and then he, you know, died a few days after that uh, is something I'm just so grateful for as well. So yeah, it just it just changes you, and I think it, it 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 and also you don't sweat the small stuff and a lot of that like the little bullshit and drama in life like becomes so much less inconsequent or so much more inco- inconsequential and less important to you after you've been through something like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, Absolutely, really powerful. Um, <clears throat> on the business side, what's been the lowest and what's been the highest or proud I, you know, moment? Not the highest necessarily. I think the thing I'm most proud of is really just all of the people that I've employed. So it's not like a single moment, mm. but when you think about it, I mean, I wrote a post today for, and one thing I'll, I'll, I'll plug real quick is we have a Facebook group too, which is Justin and stuff and talk copy, but I write about a lot of stuff besides copy in there. And I post every other day, Justin posts the other days. Uh, and so I wrote a post just about today and, and thinking about between, I mean, just four years ago, as I was starting the health supplement company and, and you know, from there in that time period, I've probably employed, 75, 80 different people. Like I actively employ over 50 people right now. Uh, one of the girls who I hired originally as a customer service agent in-house who now does all of our affiliate stuff, she just told me today, I didn't even realize this. She's like, you know, when you hired me for that first job, she's like, me and my husband had, I was pregnant. I had $300 in the bank account. We were actually homeless. We were wow. staying at a friend's house. She's like, I had, you know, my, my mother-in-law gave me one pair of shoes that I could wear for, you know, if um like the interview process, like, but yeah, you know, basically, you just like, never just know really, what's happening in people's lives. At the you time. never know. And now, four years later, she runs our, you know, affiliate network, makes six figures a year, and her and her three children just moved into like a house in like one of the nicest areas in all of Las Vegas and stuff. And it's like that's really, really cool to me. It's amazing. Uh, and even in the customer service with our agents, and and when I see them that they they bought a new car or they moved to a new place or a better area or they bought their kids something cool. Um, that's really what I'm honestly most proud of of everything I've done is all the people whose mm. lives I've been able to change through capitalism and, uh, you know, kind of just business. And so I love that stuff. It's not like I'm, I don't sit around talking about capitalism and the, the hardcore, uh, kind of laissez faire way a lot, but at the same time, capitalism is truly what's enabled me to do that. And so I love that. So that would be the high point. Yeah. I know I've met, <clears throat> I mean, I got to hang out with Blake. Yeah. Right. Who's amazing. I Absolutely. met him through you, and we've <clears throat> hung out a bunch, had dinner a bunch. Just an amazing human being, you know. And so you get to to do work with with these type of people. Yeah, and Blake's another one too. He he also hired him at the same time as Malai, who's the affiliate uh, director and marketing director. And he was at Capital One. He top kind of topped out where he could go there. The virtual office where I was using at the time was turned out to be across the street from Capital One. So he was like literally in the conference room with me we're talking and he's looking at his old work Mm. kind of debating if he's gonna make this leap or not and then same thing it's like now he's he's got such an incredible skill set a great network uh has accomplished so many incredible things and so yeah i just i love that stuff yeah love it you want to go to the low point low point sure i like to end on the high point so we don't depress me or everyone but we'll (laughs) end on the low point and then you'll you know i'm still gonna end up being positive about it no i know Because I don't even, I mean, I just think there's a ton of low points. Like, there's, you know, the first year for Holy Land Health, we lost like $200,000, and I thought I was going to fold it down, and I sat around daydreaming and fantasizing about if I should quit that company and go get a job as an internal copywriter for somebody, and I thought that's what was going to probably happen, 
and I was full of self doubt all the time and, you know, worry and anxiety, things of that nature. And so that alone, that whole year was like a struggle. And then what I think is funny is what, you know, then I have all the success after that, but it's kind of like what seems so impossible then now talking back on it, it all seems so inevitable. Like, oh, of course I was going to be successful. Of course I was going to build these great businesses. Of course I'd be here talking today. But it's like, no, there's in a, a, so many different paths that things could have gone down and I could have just quit at any given time. Why didn't and you at that point? I kept thinking to myself, I don't really want to, well, first of all, I don't want to work for somebody else. Second of all, I really did believe in what I was doing, that it, it was a good kind of um, place in the market to be. And I did think about other experiences in my life where how I had been like close to quitting and kept going. And then just like a month later, that breakthrough would come. And so, and I do think people stick with things for too long sometimes. I do think there's a, a it's a double edged sword. It's tough, totally. It is. But in my mind, I just really believed that we were going to figure it out. And I, I just, I just felt like I had to, to until like I literally had, didn't have a dollar left. I basically was going to just keep going for it. Hmm. Um, and I did. Yeah. What you did there was amazing. Actually, you say it like I've listened in other videos of you and you talk about it, not in a, in a non sort of in a, in a matter of fact, nonchalant way. Like, yeah, we, you know, did a million dollars our first year and then we did $20 million or whatever. And, and that's not normal. Like I say, right. in a, and then a positive way, you know what I mean? Um, so, <clears throat> but thanks for sharing because it does start off. It's, it's not always rainbows to the whole Absolutely process. Um, thank you, Stefan. Let's point, <clears throat> I want you to talk for a second, copy and funnel accelerator.com. Um, <clears throat> there's two different portions of this. Um, so why don't we end on that? Um, there is a, a platinum and a gold and I don't think the platinum is even available, but you can talk about it anyways. And then, you know, this is super valuable. So cool. Awesome. Yeah. So copy accelerator and I have to funnily enough with the domain is copy and funnel accelerator.com. And then obviously the forward slash outline, it'll ask for your name and email address. And then you'll get the, uh, my copy outline and the mastermind talk where I go through the RMBC method. Being completely honest, we aren't doing anything with those email addresses. I'm not. Prom I'm not saying we may not email you in the future with like a uh, stuff, but it's not gonna be like spammy. Uh, it, it's. I know it's really funny, right? Marketers who are supposed to talk the talk or walk the walk and aren't, but um, it's just we haven't really needed to, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, the, the the group has already got like uh, 60 plus members in it. Uh, and I realized the other day that the members combined the companies in our mastermind do over a billion dollars in sales annually, which is incredible. Uh, and it's a really awesome thing that I love. And so what it is, is, is copy accelerator accelerator is, um, it's a couple pieces to it. There's a weekly training. So it's like a zoom call where either Justin or myself teaches something. So maybe something from the RMBC method or this most recent Tuesday, we did fascinations and we went through and look at examples of copy from different niches and verticals. Uh, you know, maybe upsells, Justin did several sessions on upsells or headlines, whatever. So there's a teaching portion of the call, which is open to everybody. And then the second portion of the call is a live feedback portion, which is open to the platinum group. So it's platinum and gold. So platinum gets the second half of the call and they bring whatever they're working on to the call. We critique it. We give them feedback, suggestions, things of that nature. Really, uh, it's very valuable for them, you know, and, and they love it. But what I found, which is funny, is because I kind of was like, oh, is the gold going to be valuable enough for people? And the answer is like, yeah, the gold is crazy valuable. Uh, and a couple of reasons why one is sure it's us teaching and training and dissecting and we answer questions, but we also have a Facebook group, which is crazy engaged, which I sort of thought of it honestly as like almost like a throwaway, like After sure I have a Facebook group, right? right? Uh, people are bringing copy constantly and asking for feedback and Justin and I give it same, almost always the same day except for on the weekend. But even better than that, you've got all these like eight, nine figure business owners in there. And so there'll be total like threads that come where Somebody's asking a question about, hey, how have you handled this in your business? And then, you know, the CEO of like a $40 million supplement company comes in and says, I did this. And then the CEO of a $100 million supplement yeah. company comes in and says, invaluable. I did this. Yeah. And it's crazy. And it's very unfiltered, um, very, you know, people are very raw and authentic in there. And so that group is incredible. So, we, and, and everyone gets access to that the gold and the platinum. So, for that alone, the fact that gold is also less money, but like, I, frankly, just join gold for now. Um, the platinum group is full and we kind of capped it around 20 people because we 
didn't want to get to a point where we had too many people needed feedback and the calls were going for hours. Uh, but we may open to a few more people. But you know, honestly, I wouldn't even wait for that. I would join Gold. If you so, who, who does it? Who's it for? Right? It's aspiring copywriters. It's ex- current established copywriters, and it's business owners who want to enroll their in-house copywriters. In a lot of cases, the business owners end up joining as well because of the Facebook group, and they want to see what's working, and they want to know and be abreast of everything. So those are the members. And then on top of that, we do also have a live event twice a year. So our first one is in Austin, September 9th through 11th, Awesome. where Justin and I, it's like a two and a half day event. We're teaching uh, in-person copy training concepts. We're bringing in outside experts, whether it's like you know network compliance or media buying, or it's uh, Google ad copy. YouTube ad copy, whatever it is, we're bringing outside experts and we're doing one-on-one feedback and training for everybody. So if you're in the gold group, bring a sales letter to it. We're going to have sessions where basically I'll sit down with you. We'll go through your copy together, spend a half an hour on it, an hour, whatever it is. And, you know, for context for that, again, I charge like 50 grand a sales letter. I charge uh, at least $10,000 a month for consulting and that's just like four one-hour phone calls. Uh, so to get that kind of time with me and Justin, Justin just got paid 40 grand for a single day from Agora to come consult from other divisions. So it's like to get that one-on-one time with us is, is really valuable. Totally. Uh, so that's the program in a nutshell. Um, the feedback's been incredible too, by the way. Pretty much so many people have already gotten their ROI from it. Um, people are, you know, like that the video upsells, right? Just switching to that and increasing your conversions by 50% on upsell one is is amazing. And um, and I'm really giving. I'm really teaching everything I can and, and tons of resources, swipe files, shooting videos, everything. So yeah, if you're interested in copy or you employ copywriters, I would highly encourage you to check it out or just message or, or reach out to me directly about it. Yeah, if you're not interested in copy, you should be. In my opinion, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the foundation, I think of, at least in my business life, and a lot of people's are a combination between direct response and 80-20, the principles yes. of 80-20. And to me, relationships is that 80-20. The relationships is that 80% that will, as Ed O'Keefe would say, time collapse things. And, you know, something that may take lots of time, energy um, that you maybe won't discover, maybe you will after three years and you'll you'll end up, you know, an opportunity cost, lose hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Um, that one advice from one person like you or someone in the group is absolutely invaluable um, absolutely. A- every single time. So uh, your guys incorporate both of those things, direct response and kind of the 80, what I consider the 80, 20 is relationship. So um, go to copy and funnel accelerator.com slash outline, check it out. Stefan, amazing, a great excuse to chat with you. So thank you. Yeah, Jeremy, I really, really appreciate you having me on and, um, I definitely value our relationship, speaking of the 80-20 kind of principle. And, you know, I, I want to get more Italian ice in Chicago. Amen. You know, as soon as we can. It's on me. Bring it. Awesome. Man. <laughs> but I, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, nice like a peach if you find the